Good evening. It's wonderful to be with you again, isn't it, Ronnie? Yes, indeed it is. And in a packed programme tonight, we shall be bringing you exciting natural history film of Irish swallows flying north for the winter. <laughs> After which we'll be entertained by Elasto, the India rubber man, who caught himself in the door at White City Tube Station this evening and has gone to extraordinary lengths to get here. <laughs> But first, the news. At the Old Bailey trial today, Slasher Nobbs provided a very long <laughs> alibi signed by 3,000 people written on a toilet roll. The prosecution described it as a tissue of lies. <laughs> Harold Thrott, the man who last week drove his car through the window of a Folkestone leathercraft shop, was fined £20 today and had his licence embossed. <laughs> and... An extraordinary general meeting of equity, the Actors' Union, was today attended by 300 fully paid-up members and 450 fully made-up members. <laughs> the post office has announced that last year they received over five million complaints by letter and phone and, as a result, made a large profit. <laughs> With Ireland's worst drought this century, now in its 13th month, Ballymena Council... <laughs> I'd miss that one myself. <laughs> Ballymena Council announced tonight that there'll be a rainmaking ceremony in the municipal park on Tuesday, or if wet, in the town hall. <laughs> Finally, good news for North London motorists. Congestion on the North Circular Road is to be eased by the construction of the Golders Green Passover. <laughs> But now a sketch featuring Mr. Ronnie Corbett, whose dog got into the larder this morning, ate the alphabet soup, and then left little messages everywhere. <laughs> I'd like to wait here, Mr. Waterton. I'll call you when the time comes. Oh, thank you very much. I'm sorry I'm a few minutes early. <laughs> well, an hour and 20 minutes, to be precise, but I uh, missed my train. I caught an earlier one. <laughs> <laughs> well, are, the main, are there going to be a lot of... I mean, how many people will you be... Um, are you interviewing a lot of people? No, I don't suppose you are, are you? Yes, yes, we are. Oh, yes. <laughs> naturally. Is anyone the ashtray, actually? Ashtray? Sorry? Ashtray. Ashtray. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, ashtray. Sorry, ashtray. Now I go apologising to the furniture. <laughs> I do talk to furniture now and again, but it uh, doesn't affect my work in any way. <laughs> no, sir. No, right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bustles, aren't they? Mm. I don't know where I'd be without mine. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry. I say, you don't think these shoes clash with the frock, do they? No, no, I thought they'd go rather well together. Yes, want to look my best, you know. <laughs> this damn bombazine picks up every mark, you know. Bit of Welsh rabbit on there, look at that. <laughs> That's those dodgy points when we went through Red Hill. Damn good breakfast you got on that train there. Must have. Ah. You know, I'm absolutely off a gum tree here. Look at this, two syllables. There are hmm-hmms at the bottom of our garden. Begins with F. <laughs> ferrets, feathers, something like that. What? Feathers or ferrets? No, or, no, no, no. Rhymes with Marys. Oh. <laughs> no, no, there isn't any. Uh... What's wrong with fairies? Well, nothing, nothing. I have got, I've got nothing against them at all. I mean, I think you're jolly splendid chaps, all of you. <laughs> you wish to do and with whom I mean I honestly by or vice versa <coughs> what are you talking about oh I know uh, uh, 
You're talking about the dress, aren't you? <laughs> I, I think you gay lib chaps are jolly brave sticking to your guns the way you do. Listen, it's you chaps who are brave who turn up to these interviews in, in shirts and collars and ties and jackets. Don't you know it's old Garnet Hammond? Sir Garnet Hammond is doing the interviewing this morning. A chap called Crabtree came in last week for an interview dressed like you. He bet Sir Garnet hit the roof. Oh, absolutely hit the roof. Nothing wrong with him, mind you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying a word against him. Straight as a die. Lovely wife. Seven beautiful daughters. The trouble is, you see, with interviews, he has this thing about... He must have a frock. Everyone must wear a frock. He was just the same in Tobruk. <laughs> well, nobody told me. No, it's a great man, boy, isn't it? Great man. You don't think I came here like this, dressed like this for my health, do you? <laughs> I had to come past the Royal College of Hairdressers on my way here. Oh, it was absolute murder. <laughs> Portsmouth on BJ night, it was. <laughs> No, I mean, I've got a rose in my buttonhole. You want it in your teeth, old lad. That's where you want your rose. In your teeth. Well, I mean, it's perfectly simple. Either you dress according, or you just say goodbye to 15,000 pounds, the key to the executive toilet, and all the luncheon vouchers you can eat. I'm simple as that. I tell you what. I tell you what. I've got a few items here. I, uh, I don't know whether they're any good. Uh, I always carry a few spares, you know. They're not much, but they're... End of the poke in the eye with a burn stick, aren't they? <laughs> Sorry, well, I, well, it's very, very kind of you, but I mean... <laughs> I, well, I haven't done this since... Um, since where? Well, since school, really. Yeah. Uh, yes, I was the best Juliet they'd had, you know. Yeah. Well, since Christopher Lee, that was. <laughs> there you are, try that. Oh, that's very... <laughs> oh, yes, yes. There we are. Well, of course, don't let me force you into this, old chap. I mean, there's no skin off my nose. Oh, no, yet. no, I'm very grateful, honestly. Are you? Man to man, really. Right. <laughs> there we are. How do I look? What? Oh, lovely, wonderful. Keep your knees together, no one will ever notice. <laughs> I'm, I'm a rather nervous myself, you know. I think I'll just go and pay a call. Well, I'll be it's damn difficult in this dress, I can tell you. <laughs> now then, Mr. Waterton. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, sorry, just a tick. <laughs> you're, um, you're quite sure you're ready? Yes, that's it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed me, won't you? <laughs> Please, come along. Uh, good luck, Mr. Waterton. Thank you. Oh, dear. <laughs> Mr. Waterton, sir. Hello. Oh, uh, Mr. Hesker. Yes. <laughs> yes I'm, uh, I'm after Waterton. Not that I think you'll be in there very long. <laughs> he seems to be under the impression that Sir Garnet Hammond likes people in dresses. Oh, no, it's not Sir Garnet today. It's huh? the new chairman, Rear Admiral Fortescue Drake. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you alongside, Waterton, like the cut of your jib. <laughs> Who's this damn pervert? Throw him out for God's <laughs> sake. <laughs> Greetings, all strength to your bundlings, and may your fergling be ever fruitful. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> now, you may be wondering why I stand here before you brandishing my regalia. <laughs> well, the BBC have allowed me tonight to speak in favour of my cause, which is home rule for rice slip. <laughs> which I happen to be high wizard. My name is MacDonald, and I am the chief burger. Now... <laughs> Free rice slip extends from the running waters of Slashby de la Zouch here in the west all the way across to the better parts of Stonebridge Park. Now, it's bordered on the north by Pinner on the Hill, originally called Pinner the Wall, and to the south... <laughs> the south by Hatch End, formerly known as Drake's Bottom. <laughs> now, just like Cornwall and Wales, we want independence, and it is our declared aim next year to welcome His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, or, failing that, Roddy Llewellyn, <laughs> to our ancient land there to be invested Lord High Regent of Ryslip by his sublime effluence, the Archgrove of Ickenham. <laughs> Failing that, we shall have Esther Ranson because her initials are already on the pillar boxes. <laughs> now, my first duty as Chief Burger of Ryslip will be to sound the two frugal horns which summon Parliament, or Long Thing. Now, with this one... you get the attention of all free men and quite a few Daxons. <laughs> well, with this one... <laughs> you usually get a rupture. <laughs> the long thing will establish the frontiers of Ryslip. However, if people do come asking for any sort of political asylum, we shall, of course, continue to direct them to the House of Commons. <laughs> We also intend to bring in a new currency law. Now, as soon as you reach the frontier, you will have to change all your pounds into yurks. Now, there is a yurk. 
There are 47 of these to the pound and 16 to the poppadom. <laughs> but the rate is very irregular due to the failure of the cinnapod harvest. <laughs> How do we justify our stance, apart from blaming the failure of the Cenopod harvest? Well, <laughs> for 1,500 years, this priceless document aligned the floor of the cow shed at Frolics, Frickenham. Um, it shows how Ricelip's history began with one Svein Foulbreath, who came on a single-handed Viking raid in 1735, or 735, as I should say, and fell violently in love with the beauteous nymphomaniac Lady Agnes Agnesen. <laughs> who, when her lover said pass, always replied, I've started, so I'll finish. <laughs> Uh, here, you see, here, their only son, Dagobert the Pointless, who, while dancing with the galliard with his page, Poufkin Lafay, <laughs> trod on the foot of his jester, Rumpo, who beat him to death with a cabbage on a stick <laughs> and declared himself King Rumpo the First. <laughs> this genuine old map here is proof of Ricelip's royal history. Up here, the famous hump-backed mountebank, Quirk and Drawback, uh, discovered a wart cure consisting of a hard-boiled egg and the nastier bits of a badger, and with it, cured the widow Rickman's wart, you see. <laughs> And to this day, the place is still called Watford. <laughs> uh, this uh, beautiful contraption here is a very chastity belt worn by Lady Humphreyda Gerard. Now, you see, we know it's a chastity belt because it has chass on the back and uh, the rest of the word on the front. <laughs> Curious enough, she had 17 children while her husband was away on crusades. Well, when he returned, of course, she fled with the awful cry, Gerard's Cross. <laughs> In fact, I've often wondered how she managed to have 17 children. I've never seen these things work before. Oh. Oh. The hills are alive with the sound of music. I bet they were. Um, over here, over here and round here and under there, the seventh king of Ricelip, Osbert the Oversized, collected a thousand maidens for his harem and afterward named it the Hanging Gardens of Basildon. <laughs> But over here is the actual shield of Osbert the Oversized. On the left is a goose rampant on a field of long grass, and over here, the back half of Koi Pew, as he was a bit of a rat on the side. <laughs> the harem was taken over by his son, who became King Osbert the Overworked, and eventually by his very small brother, Osbert the Overlooked. Here, too, are the sacred remains of St. Notwinder of Rainer's Lane, miraculously preserved by a process known only to three Trappist monks and the makers of British rail meat pies. <laughs> In this box is one of his ears, and in this box is two of his ears. <laughs> here, here, here. Well, then. Well, there we have ample proof of Ricelip's royal past. Now, I would like to finish with the words of the Ricelip National Anthem, honouring as it does the very first monarch, King Rumpo the First. There'll always be a Ricelip while there's a subway train. Whenever there's two yellow lines beside a blocked-up drain, <laughs> the beer will all be cheap, lads. The women will be free if right slip means as much to you as Rumpo means to me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Manhattan Transfer. <laughs> Because I'm sweet on candy And candy's sweet on me do, 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 do. She understands me My understanding candy And candy's always handy When I can say Could love much more of her. She has taken your complete heart. Got a sweet tooth for my sweet heart. Candy, it's gonna be just standy the day I take my candy and make her mine oh my. Sugar candy 
because them sweet so sweet on candy and candy sweet on me you wish that there were for us I could love much more of him he has taken your complete heart you got a sweet It's gonna be just ending The day I take my candy Gee, how the sun will shine On the day my candy On the day my candy On the day Finally got here. Told you I'd get here, didn't I? Yeah, a lot of guys say that. Don't always come. You're scared of Mr. Villanetti, see? I am scared of Mr. Villanetti. <laughs> Everybody is scared of Mr. Villanetti, creep. I ain't scared of him. I ain't scared of him. Yeah. I expect me to die. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, maybe you're gonna get the opportunity. We're waiting for you right behind the door. Looks like he's gonna fill you full of lead this time, Joey. I don't care what he does to me. I ain't scared of him. Everybody's scared of him. I ain't scared of him. He don't scare me. Hey, Joe. So you got here. Good. Hi there, Mr. Belletti. I came like you wanted. Good, good. You ain't scared of me, are you, Joe? No, I ain't scared of you, Mr. Belletti. Only I've been thinking, maybe I gotta fill you this time, Joe. You don't have to fill me, Mr. Villanetti. I ain't scared of you. I, I like you. Good, good. Come on, step into my room here a moment. You gonna have to fill me, Mr. Villanetti? I'm gonna have to, Joe. But it ain't gonna hurt a bit. Come in. <laughs> Oh, c'est incroyable. 
Attrapé. Je vais te tuer. Te tuer. Hein? Oh, oh. Maurice, qu'est-ce que je peux dire Je suis si seul, c'est tout. Je pense que je ferais mieux de m'en aller. Je suis vraiment navré d'avoir profité de la situation, monsieur. Je regrette cette situation plus que je ne peux. Pardonnez-moi. Pardonnez, pardonnez. Euh, si jamais je t'attrape encore avec ma femme, je te promets de t'étrangler de mes propres mains, tu comprends Je ne veux plus jamais voir ton visage. Euh, allez, dors, 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 dors. Maintenant, à nous deux, ma chérie, je vais te donner une fessée dont tu te souviendras toute ta vie. Je t'en prie. Ne me bats pas. Fais-moi l'amour. Tu ne peux pas me résister. Et je me sens si passionnée. Viens, je vais t'enchanter, mon petit cœur adoré. Est-ce que tu me battrais vraiment, mon chéri Tu me battrais. Mais si je le fais, ça va sûrement se transformer très vite en ça. Le lit s'est cassé Ne t'inquiète pas, c'est aussi bon par terre. <rire> ah oui, t'as raison. Pourquoi n'avons-nous pas essayé ça avant Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, tonight, by the way, you, how many of you noticed that just then? I slipped in a little bit of, slipped in a bit of German there. <laughs> no, I didn't do that just to impress, you know. I was actually for the benefit of our new au pair girl, you know, who started doing a bit of work for us this weekend at home. Uh, she's just come over, it's true, she's just come over to learn the language, and she's doing very well. This morning she said to me, I hope you'll be forgiving me my extremely bad language, but I'm afraid my grandma still needs touching up. Now, she's actually... <laughs> fasc fasc fascinating. She's fascinating to listen to. Now, anyway, on Tuesday, I'll tell you, on Tuesday last week, I decided to have an early night. And I was sitting in bed with the Radio Times, browsing through the adverts, you know, for ex-Ren naval officers, WX Bloomers, and, <laughs> and, admi and admiring a photo of Patrick Moore, and wondering what it must be like to put your suit on with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> when suddenly, a au pair girl entered. She didn't walk in, she glided into the room. My own fault, really. Silly place to leave the skateboard. <laughs> Then all at once, she sat on the bed, she put her arm round me, I said, how dare you? I am a man of integrity, I'm happily married, and I'm British. I said, I must warn you, if you're not out of this bedroom by half past seven tomorrow morning, I shall go. <laughs> Whereupon she left. Now, tonight's story, tonight's story was actually handed down to me by my dear old grandfather. The other night as he was clearing out our attic. I suppose, now, I suppose really, I should have gone up myself, but with my height, climbing a ladder can be a bit of an ordeal. I mean, the last time I pitched camp for the night on the fourth rung, I ran out of supplies. <laughs> Now, besides which, my grandfather, in spite of his age, is a remarkably fit man. 92, and still doing all the things he was doing when he was 21. You know, you can imagine my shock the other night when I peeked through the crack in his bedroom door and I saw two sets of false teeth in his glass. And, <laughs> and the next day he was walking around with another notch in his walking stick. Anyway, this, <laughs> this... This joke... This joke was contained in an old scrapbook he came across in the attic. It was a scrapbook, actually, of all the ecstatic rave reviews of my past performances. I let go of it at one point and nearly floated out the window. Now, <laughs> looking, looking through it, looking through it, brought back lots of happy memories because I had some very strange jobs back in the old days, you know. I, start, I joined very early on a travelling sideshow with the fattest man in the world, you know. 
bit tragic, actually. His tummy came right out to here. In the end, he died of curiosity. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, now, I must get on with this joke, because let's be honest, I'm, I'm not feeling... I'm feeling a little bit groggy tonight. I, I had a tooth out earlier on the week. It started aching on Wednesday night as I was watching the late-night film, you know, about Ivan the Terrible and his wife, Blodwin, the extremely disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> It was still plaguing me this morning at rehearsal, so I thought, it's no use, I'll have to have it out. So I went along to the BBC emergency dental service there. No appointment necessary. You just go up to one of the scene boys and tell him to get a move on, and that's the end of it. So, <laughs> on with the joke, which concerns these two rugby players who are both spending the summer holidays at Scarborough for a bet. And one day, one day, for a, one day for a bit of a thrill, they decide to go to the local fairground. When they get there, one of the rugby players turned to the other one. He said, Rodney, he said. Rodney Love. <laughs> Actually, when I say they were rugby players, that was a bit of an exaggeration. They weren't really rugby players. I just put that in to try and win back a few of the Welsh viewers who switched off after the line about Ivan the Terrible. Anyway, <laughs> he said, Rodney, dear heart. He said, Rodney. He said, how do you fancy a go on the Big Dipper? And the other one said, that's not a Big Dipper, he said, because he happened to speak exactly the same as his friend, the Strapsy. He said, that's not a Big Dipper. He said, that's a Ferris wheel. Anyway, he said, much, uh, much more of this and I can wave goodbye to my free seat to the Generation Game. Anyway, he said... <laughs> he said... He said he said, you can go up if you like, Terry, but it looks far too dangerous for me. So off he goes, and... Oh, sorry, I nearly got stuck there. Off he goes. <laughs> off the first one goes on his own to one of those big, huge fairground wheels. He pays his money, and the wheel slowly starts spinning round. As it goes, it gets faster and faster, until suddenly the chap loses his grip completely, and he's thrown right off the wheel into the air and lands on the ground below. Well, straight away, everybody rushes round him, and his friend who's been watching, is in horror, pushes his way through the crowd, comes across this prostrate body lying there. He says, Terry, he said, Terry. He said, are you hurt? Friend lifted himself on one elbow and said, Well, of course I'm hurt. He said, I went round three times, you never waved once. <laughs> and healthy thoughts. Put on your pumps and a pair of shorts. Get out and give your muscle the worst. It's ten to one. You'll find us where there's action in the open air. We're very well known as the bouncing pair of physical jerks. You will find we're noted for our fabulous physique. And we do our best to keep performance at a peak. To tone me up and keep me bright, I like a workout twice a night. And as for me, I get it once a week. <laughs> Work you up and give you zest. You'll find that exercise is best. It really puts hairs on my uncle's chest. And it did the same for your auntie Lou. <laughs> to help the health of beauty grow. We'll bend our back and touch our toe. It's certainly giving your cheeks a glow. And my face is rosier too. <laughs> Dumbbells, ladies, please beware. Many a thing can befall you when you wave them in the air. <laughs> they are nice little kits for improving the bits that gentlemen like to see. But not if you just get a rather large bust and an arm like a chimpanzee. <laughs> Charmley, watching us put the shot, said, how comely, what a finesse you got. I thought he might pop the question, but instead he made a suggestion. So I mentioned with grace an alternative place that Colonel could put the shot. <laughs> You a fellow with muscles Who'd lift the best part of a tongue He was picking up weights for a living And middle-aged blondes for fun <laughs> One day in a competition He attempted to pick up a bus There were tears in his eyes as he took First prize, seven quid and a second-hand trust <laughs> Working with skittles you need so practice for a spell. Elizabeth got in the Indian club because of a Mr. Patel. <laughs> Poor old Bess. She's really an awkward girl. I heard that she frequently dressed. 
corrupts the lot And often the skittles as well <laughs> The finger nice, and we've got to spend this scheme to help you slim. You can shed that surplus fat, just get flat upon the mat, and have an hour or two of good old gin. Gin, gin, gin will give you gusto. Gin, gin, gin will make you kick. And the minutes as they fly will put a twinkle in your eye when an hour or two of gin has done the trick. <laughs> I'm on a diet I'd rather be having a bit on the quiet I'm trying to diet I'm dying to try it <laughs> impossible this afternoon My cheeks are like apples I'm rather a cutie My sting like a peach And my pear is a beauty I'm rich and I'm ripe And remarkably fruity You're either a plum or a prune Can the matter be? Fellas, don't follow me, chat up or flatter me. I'm just a gal with a fatter anatomy since I've been having me chips. <laughs> I'm fond of potatoes, I'm terribly naughty. Me nighty's a whitey instead of a shorty. I'm flirty and thirty. I thought you were forty. That's only my bust and my hips. <laughs> Once had a thing about Rosemary Clooney Whose figure was slender in part of balloony In places that made us feel teeny and puny We really could do with a notion or two I found the solution while I was out shopping And added some padding to pop in my topping Now I'm Miss Popper and I'm Miss Whopping And if you're the shape, you know what to do Arms the white, legs the stride When we leave the class That's the way the Johnny old drill gets done <laughs> We never mind the weather We never mind the weather You can't keep your knees, knees together Arms the white, legs the stride Bouncing on the grass That's the way we often had lots of fun And that's the sort of action With amazing satisfaction So we're really, we're really We're doing it in the sun For tonight, but here are a few items of late news. Tonight's big theatrical award, most promising actress of the year, went to Deirdre Wallop. However, she was disqualified after it was discovered that she'd promised everybody on the jury. <laughs> and a man, a man who thinks he's an American town was getting worse last night in the London clinic. He has now worked himself up into a state. <laughs> There was a huge and colourful firework display at Buckingham Palace tonight after Princess Anne stubbed her toe. <laughs> Next week we'll be talking to an impoverished ex-member of the KGB, Smeargol Gollum, who's trying to make ends meet by taking in brainwashing. <laughs> And we'll meet the embarrassed Scotsman who muddled up a bag of flour and a bag of starch and finished up with a very stiff haggis and a self-raising kilt. <laughs> Good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good night. Good night. Good night.